Good morning, everyone. I'm Ira Armeni, and I'm pleased to present our work on 3D semantic parsing of large scale indoor spaces. I'd like to begin by asking why is it important to understand indoor spaces? Well, we spend 90% of our time indoors, which means that a great amount of activities take place there. And if we want our systems, such as robots or augmented reality, to be able to operate in this environment, they need an understanding of these spaces. 3D sensing technology has undergone great development recently and can now provide us with accurate and detailed scans of large-scale spaces. Such scans are essentially the 3D point clouds of the entire space. The goal of this work is to be able to parse point clouds of unprecedented scale into their semantic building elements, such as walls, ceilings, rooms, etc. Let's take, for example, this point cloud, which corresponds to only part of the floor of the actual building. It has 45 rooms, an area of more than 950 square meters, and more than 900 building elements. There is a great amount of previous work on semantic understanding of indoor spaces. One of heavily studied topic is small-scale parsing, which focuses on one or few rooms, while we tackle this problem on a large-scale point cloud. Instead of using RGB or RGBD data as an input, we use large-scale point clouds. Traditional space parsing approaches of point clouds are challenged in existence of clutter, which is heavily observed in occupied spaces. Lastly, a number of methods have been also proposed to address other tasks in the context of building, such as floor plan reconstruction. Large-scale 3D point clouds pose new challenges and opportunities. They raise issues of complexity and introduce new semantics such as floor plan components like rooms or hallways. But they also capture richer geometric information such as regularities across man-made spaces and provide new bases for novel applications such as providing space statistics. We propose a hierarchical approach to the problem of 3D semantic parsing of large-scale indoor spaces. We begin with a raw point cloud of a whole building or a very large scale of a part of a building that we first segment into disjoint spaces, which are essentially the rooms, hallways, and other building spaces. And subsequently, we parse each of the found spaces into their composing elements. We inject strong spatial priors from the disjoint space parsing step to the element parsing step through projecting all spaces in a common reference coordinate system. We also update the room parsing results by utilizing the information obtained during object detection. Our primary contributions are as follows. We propose a hierarchical approach which has two layers, the disjoint space parsing and the semantic element parsing. The first layer is unsupervised, parameter-free, scalable, and robust to clutter and noise. In the case of the second layer, we follow a detection rather than a segmentation approach. We also define a common reference coordinate system to encode regularities across spaces. Last, we release a large-scale 3D indoor spaces dataset that comprises of six large areas from three bu different buildings. The total surface area is more than 6,000 square meters. There is a total of more than 250 rooms and 9,500 building elements in the dataset. Going into more details, we begin with a color 3D point cloud. And here are some examples of the spaces included in our dataset. You can see how the building elements present variations among different areas. Now we explain how we parse the input into disjoint spaces. Here's an example of two adjacent disjoint spaces. Conventional approaches on space parsing resort to surface fitting algorithms that are challenged in cluttered scenes and have several parameters to fine tune. Others also require prior knowledge, such as scan locations. Instead of looking for flat surfaces, we identify the empty area between two disjoint spaces, which corresponds to the interior of the wall not visible to the sensing device. The empty space is a more unique and invariant signature of space dividers in the point clouds, which leads to robustness to clutter and sensing noise. We design a filter which looks for this signature pattern in the point cloud. Here's a way we detect space dividers. We protect the points in the point cloud on one of its main Cartesian axes, let's say X, and form the histogram of points. The wall roughly appears with a peak, gap, and peak signature in the signal due to the pattern we discussed earlier. We convolve the signal with a template of the same peak, gap, peak form, which fires whenever such a pattern is observed. However, the parameters of this template, such as the width of the gap, are not known a priori and differ between one building or among different buildings. 
Therefore, we form a filter bank with different parameters and perform max pooling across the filters in the bank. Finally, we identify the space dividers with applying non-maximum suppression on the signal, since we end up with a lot of smaller responses around the strongest one due to the sliding nature of the convolution. We use the location of the space dividers to slice the point cloud across axis X, and we repeat the same procedure iteratively for each of the remaining axes. We chose to perform the segmentation across each of the main axes one by one in order to keep the complexity linear with respect to the covered area. However, this leads to an over-segmentation, which can be officially merged using the following process. We first form a neighbor graph where each over-segment forms a node and edges are placed between spatially neighboring nodes. We examine each edge iteratively for the existence of a space divider using the previous approach and we remove it if a strong response is actually returned. We then find the connected components, which give us the final room configuration. This is a fly-through video of the disjoint space parsing results, where each color represents one space. As mentioned before, the approach is unsupervised, parameter-free, and can handle large-scale spaces as it has linear complexity. Here are some qualitative results of spaces of space parsing for four different areas. It can be observed that the algorithm can handle areas with different levels of regularity and repetitiveness. We compare our method to surface and line fitting algorithms. Parsing such large spaces into rooms is less obvious than you might think. For example, in our experiments, applying Ranzac ends up missing some of the wall surfaces. And when applying a line fitting half transform, the floor plan ends up over segmented. The better performance of our algorithm can also be observed in the numerical results. As I mentioned earlier, we wish to inject strong geometric priors acquired from the first step into the second step, that of element parsing. We observe how man-made spaces have similar layout configuration, and the location of the elements within them shows repetitive patterns. To encode these regularities and be able to extract corresponding features, we form a common reference coordinate system, where we systematically align and normalize all found spaces in a unit cube. Having acquired this new common reference coordinate system, we proceed to parsing each space into its 12 composing elements. We follow a parsing by, de by detection strategy, mainly because it is unrealistic to assume that every point must belong to only one class, because parsing by segmentation results to incomplete objects where parts are missing, and because most of the target applications would benefit from a notion of the parsed element as a whole, regardless of if, that would be, if the element might be partially occluded. We adopt a 3D sliding window approach. At its stride, we evaluate 3D candidate windows on whether the underlying point cloud portion actually corresponds to the class of interest or not. We represent a detection with a voxelized bounding box, from which we extract a set of global and local features. The global features are computed in the common reference coordinate system. For its detection box, we extract its global location P with reference to the origin of the local coordinate system, as well as its relative size s. The local features, which account for the local geometry of the object, are computed in the original space. For each of the voxels, we extract the binary occupancy, the ratio of the numbers in the voxel over the total number of points in the bounding box, the mean RGB color, normal vector, and the curvature of the points in the voxel. We then train 12 1 versus all SVM classifiers, one for each class. We slide a dictionary of shapes, which we'll learn from our training data in the following way. We cluster all instances per class using affinity propagation over the k by k by k voxel occupancy map, which results to around 5 to 100 shapes per class. During testing, we slide each of the learned shapes per class and evaluate the corresponding SVM per position. However, the SVM detections are generated without having an understanding of other elements. To enforce the contextual consistency among all detections, we use a CRF on top of the SVM, in which each potential detection is represented with a, with a node, and each node is connected to its case spatially neighboring nearest proposals from its class. We predict the final elements as a maximization problem of this energy function, where the unary potentials are the SVM scores, and the binary ones are defined with regard to the binary occupancy, size, and global position of two connected nodes. This is a fly-through video of the element detection results for the complete point cloud. Here you can see the input to the algorithm, which is the raw point cloud. And here the output in terms of points. 
and in terms of voxels. These are element detection results for a sample room. You can see the, out the output in terms of voxels, bounding boxes, and points. The first three columns illustrate the self baselines, which are without global geometry, without local geometry, and without color information, and the last two correspond to our results and to the ground truth. And these are a few more examples. As you can see, the global features have the largest impact, which is something we expected. Here is the mean average precision of detection for our algorithm, the self baselines, and two external 3D baselines that had the highest performance in the KD object detection benchmark. Finally, we show a few applications that emerge from such an understanding of large-scale point clouds. We can compute a coarse natural illumination model of the scanned space by calculating the relative distance of each point from the windows, taking into account other semantics such as doors and walls. Another application is semantic manipulations. We can easily visualize how adjacent spaces would look like if we were to remove the in-between walls. Similarly, we can remove or replace any detected object. All material we show today, as well as the dataset, interactive visualizations of code are available on our project website. A demo will also become available that allows users to upload their own point cloud data and receive the parsing results. You can also stop by our demo session tomorrow. I'd like to thank my co-authors. <laughs> I'd like to give special thanks to my co-authors, and I'd be happy to answer any questions.